Hello, hello, hello. Anthony Love. with the movieblog.com. Cynthia, it's nice to see you again. Good to see you again. Yes. Um, I know you both are very busy. I'm trying to be brief. <laughs> um, so I'll just hop right in. Uh, Markella. Yes. Nori is a character in this series that brings, I guess, a sense of uh, innocence and curiosity to the story. How did you prepare for this role, especially when placed alongside this much darker and heavier plotline in the series? Yeah. I mean, I think I... The, where Nori is in season one and season two are really two different places, but she always does have a through line of curiosity and that always is an undercurrent, you know, especially when she's looking at, at what she decides to do next. So I think we're thinking about it. And so for me... A lot of that was just making sure that I was fleshing out her backstory and going, okay, so where did this come from? I think it's just also inherently just part of her nature. She's always been a very inquisitive half, which she's always wanted to kind of think outside the box. But for me, watching certain films that kind of celebrate, like I remember I watched The Little Mermaid at the very start because there was <laughs> just that that kind of theme of, of wanting to really get out there and, and test the waters. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but also, uh, but whose ideas were also dismissed and kind of just was told that they weren't possible. So I think, and not out of malice, just out of pure j protectiveness. So I think that it was a really that really helped in listening to certain music, but just really focusing on backstory and then the relationships that she has with your fellow halfwits and the stranger. I'm I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it every step of the way. Thank you. Um, Cynthia, Miguel has evolved into a very complex leader this season, and she has a very heavy burden. Um, she's balancing prophecy. She's balancing politics. Is there anything that you see in yourself in this character? And how do you see her arc evolving as the tensions rise in Numenor? Hmm. I think that I always viewed Midiel as somebody who, even prior to her blindness, was a very internal person, somebody who really sort of had their sort of thoughts to themselves and didn't necessarily sort of um, unburden herself um, and put it on, on anyone else. And so I think sometimes I can kind of internalize and be thinking and thinking and, you know, somebody's like, are you all right? Or what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. Meanwhile, it's everything. Um, so I think that, you know, that sort of inner life and inner world, I feel like I share with Mediel. I think that, that that was always an aspect to her that I felt like I understood. And obviously, once she's blinded, it's even more so that she really has to um, not only sort of like, you know, process everything sort of in her inner mind, in her eye, uh, but then there is the vulnerability of what it is to sort of um, lean on someone, in this case, Elendil, that there is a sort of, you know, she at at the sort of um, point in the story that we see them in season two, he's really the only person that she can trust. Mm -hmm. It's no longer Farazan. Her father has passed. There are no other people that, that she could sort of um, share some of her burden with. So I think that I love that there was an opportunity there to show the evolution of that dynamic. Um, and, you know, by the end, when she does sort of make the decision to to stay in Numenor and, and sort of return to, you know, being on her own, uh, I will be very curious to see how that manifests moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, both Nori and Muriel represent characters on the brink of great change in Middle Earth. How do you how do you see these roles reflecting on the broader themes of destiny? And, and in leadership in Tolkien's world. Wow. How do we see them in regards to the... I mean, I think that... The, actually, yeah, that's a really interesting question. And I think that for Nori, she's not looking at what she's doing and the decisions she's making, thinking that it's going to absolutely change the world. And that's why I think that some people who... You know, she's really grounded in what she thinks is right and really stands by what she believes in, but she's not expecting an acknowledgement or a reward or this kind of grand change to be because of her. There's not, she, she doesn't have like a hero complex about being the one to make, to make everything happen. And that's why I think that she's, 
this being in Middle Earth that could affect change because it's the only intention she has, the pure intention. She just wants to make the world a better place in her corner of Middle Earth. Whether that affects the rest of Middle Earth, who knows, but for now that's what she leads with. And so I think that that's why people call her maybe an unlikely or people call certain people unlikely heroes because they don't seem to be taking up as much space as as you would assume one might. So I think that that's why she ends up being someone who you could see uh, really affecting the world on a on a large scale. Yeah, I, I love that. And you're right, that, that that it is a time of great change in Middle Earth and, yeah. and that or these characters and how they choose to navigate that or what that represents in the larger context. I mean, Lloyd and I, Lloyd who plays Elendale, we talked a lot about the idea of sort of blind faith versus sort of what you know does not sort of inherently feel right. That, you know, if if there are rules that say I should go along with this because that's, you know, what's supposed to happen. And yet in my gut, it feels absolutely against everything I just know to be right. Um, you know, what what does that mean? What how, how do you sort of know to proceed? And and um, you know, I think the idea of faith, not just in the religious context, but sort of um an ideal that that was something that I thought was really interesting because there's it's obviously a dense sort of topic and theme and it can mean many things to many people. But ultimately I think for both of our characters, um, you know, we're trying to be forces for good in in our like as you said, our corners of Middle Earth. Thank you both so much. It's a pleasure speaking with you both. I can't wait to speak with you again. Thank you for your time. Thank Anthony, you so much. I also love your post kids on in your wall. I was very honest and stressful. Which one is that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye.